from a qualitative standpoint, mutation and migration may seem very different. Mutations are spontaneous changes in DNA, while migration is the arrival of new individuals from other populations. Quantitatively, however, they are very similar because they both can introduce new alleles into a population. For example, let's consider an allele big A, wild type, and its mutant allele little a. And let's say that little a is selectively neutral, right? It conveys no fitness advantage or disadvantage. Now, let's assume that big A mutates to little a with a rate of mu. That is to say that if the proportion of allele A in a generation is P sub N, then the proportion of an allele of the allele A in the next generation, P sub N plus one, is P sub N minus P sub N times mu. Right? And again, that's because each generation, big A alleles mutate to little a alleles with a rate of mu. And so, the and so each generation, the proportion that is lost is P of N times mu. You can also rewrite this as P of N plus one is P of N times one minus mu, right? And that's just some basic algebra. But this reading also makes some sense, right? Because in each generation, if the rate of loss of big A alleles is mu, then the rate that those alleles did not change is one minus mu, right? And so the other, um, the other idea to consider in this is, what if this mutation is reversible, right? So the reverse mutation often occurs at a different rate. So let's say that if the rate that big A mutates to little a is mu, then the rate of the reverse from little a back to big A is nu. Now we can ask the question, if we wait a really long time, what kind of equilibrium allele frequencies do we reach, right? And so if the frequency, if the frequency of big A is P, as in the way that we represented it in Hardy-Weinberg, and the frequency of little a is Q, then at equilibrium, the rate that um, big A alleles change to little a is mu is equal to the rate that little a alleles change back to big A alleles. And so we write that as saying that at equilibrium, P times mu equals Q times nu. And remember though that P plus Q must equal one. And so we can actually replace Q in this equation by one minus P. And then we can just go ahead and solve for P. And what we do that, we find that the equilibrium value of P which we'll write as p hat is nu over mu plus nu. There we go. Here's the thing though. If we look at evolutionary data, we can actually estimate values of mu and nu. And we find that they're on the order of like 10 to the minus five or 10 to the minus six per generation, which means that it can take tens of thousands of generations for mutation 
like this to meaningfully impact allele frequencies. They change much more rapidly under, uh, in other situations, such as when a population is small. In such cases, random changes to allele frequency simply due to random mating can have a much larger impact. And random drift is next.